Strategic Hot Box with Dr. Brandy Love Stankovic. Discussing leadership, business, and how to take control of your life and achieve greatness. From the streets of Las Vegas, energized, informed, and never diluted. It's time to kick some ass. Hey, it's your girl, Dr. Brandy Stankovic, and you are here with me on the Strategic Hot Box. And today, we have a very special guest. I'm so excited, maybe even a little nervous. Am I sweating? I could be, I could be even a little sweating. But the amazing Antonio Neves is here with us today to talk a little bit about you got skills and what that means to leadership in this crazy 2020 that we're experiencing. Let's get started. As you know, on the Strategic Hot Box, we learn, we love, and we kick ass. And I did post on Instagram at some point during this process that I don't think that, come on, world, none of this was on my vision board for 2020. Goodness, that the world has completely shifted. It has changed so much. All of us, the way that we were living, the way that we were interacting with one another, the way that we were doing business has been essentially thrown out the window and we're all reinventing ourselves in the process process of that. And leadership is such an essential component. And so we have an expert here with us today to talk us through the things that we can be doing personally as we explore and reinvent and reforecast in this the, at the end of 2020 here and into the future. Every decade, of course, every era, there requires new skills. Every moment in history has required different things. And, and times certainly have changed. Industries grow, technology advances, and it impacts all the things that we do as leaders. And of course, over the last 20 years, 30 years even, leadership certainly has evolved. I think that gone are the days of even the author authoritarian leader and even shifted to a really open leader, maybe shifting a little bit back to some servant leadership or situational leadership, people that are more engaged or, or motivating in that way. And decentralized, we've seen a lot of decentralized decision making. And so allow, empowering teams that are different areas, thinking more locally in the organizations that are out there. Uh, I certainly believe in emotional intelligence. We've talked a lot about that on the podcast and how increasingly important emotional intelligence is to us today as leaders and what that will look like moving forward. I think 2020 has brought about this concept of resilience and, and brought it to our forefront of saying, how can we persevere? How can we be resilient as leaders and as human beings throughout the world? And then, of course, communication. I think communication changes with the times. It has evolved over the last 30 years with technology, with the, with the impact of digital communication and how we present ourselves. I think even the fact that 2020 has forced us to all be on Zoom calls all day long. I I actually called into a conference call yesterday and when I called in they I realized somebody said oh I don't mean to be looking down and I'm like oh oh that means everybody can see one another it had it I had completely forgotten to 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 log into the video completely forgotten or maybe just didn't log into I don't know one, one of the two of those but gone are the days of even just having regular phone calls right I mean we we're having so many video interactions now because of everything that's happening so as we ease out of the pandemic or as different organizations are executing on their phase backs, you know, back into society, we're opening up retail and different businesses are trying to get back to this new normal or get to a, a new place. The world is a bit unknown and I feel like we're figuring it out every single day. So what skill sets are we going to need to employ moving forward? What is, gonna, what is it going to look like for an organization as, as we enter into next year? Uh, I, as you know, do a lot of strategic planning and I feel like all the strategic planning we did in 2019, it was, it was sharp. It was on. It was based on research and the economy and things and it did not include COVID-19. It just didn't. And organizations just weren't ready for this. I certainly wasn't ready for this. No one had a magic ball and it did turn the world upside down. And so how do we begin to go into strategic planning and forecasting in the future? Are people going to be a little fearful of that? Or do we need to just evolve as leaders? And what are those skill sets that we're going to need? So I'd like to bring in our guest, Antonio Neves. He's a colleague and, of course, a very amazing human being that's out there doing this and motivating so many leaders already. And he'll tell us a little bit more about what we can be doing. He has his bachelor's from Western Michigan and a master's from Columbia. He's internationally recognized leadership speaker, author, and award-winning journalist. 
His next book is publishing through Penguin Random House, and it's going to be called Stop Living on Autopilot. Very cool. Very excited to read that. And he's the host of the podcast called The Best Thing, and I can't wait to learn more about that. Please join me in welcoming Antonio Nez. Antonio! Hey, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited that you're with us. You're the perfect person to have a conversation with about what on earth we're supposed to be doing as leaders and how do we define this new normal. But before we do, tell us a little bit about you. What inspired you to be the leader you are today? Um, You know, I grew up from a background in Michigan with a lot of instability, and I saw a lot of people making mistakes in front of me. And somehow, internally, I knew that there had to be another way. And that allowed me the opportunity to become a first-generation college student to go get my education, to leave small town Michigan, and eventually move to New York City with about $800 in my bank account to pursue a career in the television industry that lasted over 12 years as a reporter and correspondent. I always knew that there was a different way. I knew that I had to do things to get myself uncomfortable, to stretch, and to grow. And I knew early on that that was really up to me. Yes, I knew people were in my corner, but at the end of the day, I knew that the person I looked at in the mirror every single day had to be willing to bet on himself and do the work. And that's my goal every single day, to be willing to bet on me, take the actions, take the steps, knowing that people are going to support me. They're going to they're ride for me, if you will. And that requires me you know, leading, taking action to ensure that they can support me the best way they know how. And the, I think that that concept of of being able to bet on yourself or being feeling good about the decisions that you're making or even having it be the guiding light as saying, what would make me the happiest at the end of this is, is so incredible. Now, 2000, at the end of 2019, some of the skills that we were we were sharing and, and encouraging leaders with were, were, were maybe shifted as we go into 2020. So how has that evolved? What does that look like? It's funny, my message to a lot of the leaders when I go in and give about 40 talks a year all across the country, it hasn't shifted too much. If you know me, people know what I talk about a lot is accountability, and I talk a lot about taking responsibility for your experience. And you mentioned beautifully in your open about how important resilience is. Right now, people are finding firsthand how prepared they are, uh, what type of conditioning they have, what type of work they have or have not been doing. When I worked in television for so long and live television, it's easy when everything works, when everything goes Mm -hmm. right. But when that guest cancels at the last moment, when that teleprompter goes out, when something breaks, that's when you really find out what you're made of. And that's all about the planning. And that's all about doing the work ahead of time. Like you said earlier, your vision board did not uh, anticipate this happening. But the fact that you had a vision board, the fact that even though you're using that as a metaphor, Mm -hmm. the fact that you had a roadmap allows you to pivot. A lot of people, whether they're in business or in life, they kind of just wake up and they start going. They never identify where they want to go. The cool thing is when you identify where you want to go, even if things get in your way, you still have that destination. So you may get off on the exit, but you know how to get back on the main road when things get back uh, to normal. Right now, there are some people, some organizations that got off on an exit they did not plan on getting off on, and they're going to find it really challenging, really hard to get back on the main road to get where they want to go. As long as they know that end in mind, though, and that's a big piece of it, as you mentioned, I know that several leaders that I've worked with have made decisions fast. Some have jumped into decisions, and then they learn additional information that would have led them to a different decision. So maybe a decision led them to exit the freeway, and they went, whoop. It's we definitely have to get back on. And so I think that but making you're saying kind of making those decisions allows you as long as you know where it is that you want to be traveling to. 100 percent. And I think we have to remember in this day and age that not making a decision is making a decision. Mm. There are a lot of organizations that are waiting to say something. They're waiting to say things to their employees, to their teams, to leadership, et cetera. And what they have to know is that not making a decision is making a decision. And that has a major influence. So we can sit on the sidelines if we want, but it's game day. It's, it's been game day all along. So it's time to take off the practice uniform, put on the game uniform and get into the game and start making some decisions, start making some choices. Mm -hmm. Now, does that mean that every decision, every choice that you make will be right? Absolutely not. But you will be making a choice and you will be leading by doing that. Mm, I love that. You're right. And I think that the faster that people can go into those decisions, the bigger decisions that they're making, that's part of the advice that I've given to people along the way here in this environment is make the bigger decisions now. 
when when you have this flexibility or even tolerance of the world to have some mistakes that could, that come from these decisions, as well as the faster that you move through it, the faster we'll learn whether or not this fits right. I agree 100%. Also, what's happening right now is people, frankly, they're not being honest with their teams. They're not being honest with their employees. They're really trying to, to, to pat people on the back, on the shoulder, and everything's going to be okay. Don't worry. You know, we're going to come back stronger than ever. Are you? Mm. I don't know if that's going to be the case. What I come to find in moments like this is we have to look eye to eye to people and say, hey, look, we did not anticipate this. We weren't planning for this. Things aren't going great. We may experience some challenges. We may experience some setbacks. It may look like this. We may have cuts. We may have furloughs. But a lot of people aren't saying those words because they want to spare feelings. They want to spare um, you know, decreasing morale. But I find that the more you're willing to tell the truth, folks will, will, will stand taller. They will respect you even more because if you're not telling the truth and then you make a tough decision, folks are going to say, forget this man, forget this woman. They didn't tell me the truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they almost feel blindsided by it. And so being honest is certainly a component of the inspiration, but how does a leader now in this new normal inspire their staff? Uh, I think it starts with being honesty, uh, being honest. And sometimes that means saying, um, being willing to share what you don't know, mm -hmm. but also being willing to share what you do know. I find that in challenging times like these, you let people know that you are willing to get your hands dirty with everyone else. Those folks that are on the front lines doing things that maybe leadership doesn't do, maybe you're willing to do that. Maybe you're willing to pick up the phone and make some phone calls to call people to, to get a, a pulse, a temperature, if you will, of how the organization is doing. That also means being willing to call your customers to see how they are doing right now. We forget sometimes we only think internally about our staff, but we have a lot of customers and people we work with on a regular basis that may be struggling, going through some tough times. I find that more communication is better. And sometimes we think we have to tell people stuff, but what people want most of the time is just to be heard. Mm -hmm. Hey, what's going on for you? What are some of your fears? What are you most excited about? Um, what opportunities do you see in the midst of this? And that's the, that right there is, is a big um, shortcoming of leaders is that they're trying to make decisions in a conference room. And in my experience, as you know, Brandy, some of the answers to an organization's most pressing challenges, and not just during a pandemic, but just during a regular quarter, those answers are on the front lines. Those answers are with their teams, but they like to make these big decisions in a conference room as opposed to going out to their people who have insight that they will never have. Mm -hmm. In connection with the, the people that they're serving. Absolutely, 100%. And so if you, we turn the tables a little bit and talk about quarantine and, and the stay at home efforts that have happened, what have been, what has been a blessing in disguise for you? What's been the best thing that's happened over the last several months? Wow. This wasn't on my vision board either. I'm a guy mm -hmm. that's used to getting up early in the morning, getting on planes, traveling over, uh, you know, 40 times a year for speaking engagements. And that's work that I absolutely love. That's not something I complain about. One thing I've learned right away being an entrepreneur is that, I never want my business contingent upon me getting on a plane mm -hmm. to earn income. And that's me showing up. Don't get me wrong. A, a good portion of my income I can make not being on a plane, not showing up to a location. But the best thing is me really being able to prioritize and put focus on areas of my business that don't require me getting on a plane. And that's allowed me to be creative in ways that I haven't been in a long time. That's allowed me to flex some muscles that have been wanting to be flexed. But because of the constant strain of traveling, being in different town time zones, being in different countries, that hasn't uh, been able to happen. So this for me essentially has been a control all delete moment. It has been <laughs> a reset that I didn't know that I needed, and it has been already a game changer for my business. I, I'm more confident that I'm gonna come out of this as a business owner stronger than I was previously because of this reset. And I'm also like, do I really need to get on a plane that many times a year? And the answer is no. So I'm having some creative things I'm doing to grow the business and still continue to deliver great value to my, my clients and customers all across the country. That's amazing. And I love that frame that you've, that you've created of the reset and the, the, the reimagine that happens in that. And I certainly can relate to what happens when I don't go on an airplane, like the first engagement, the second, the fourth, the 10th, 
cancel here in these couple months that, you know, the last few months that have happened. And I just start going, oh, oh. so this is more than just recapturing that income, that 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 opportunity loss that happened. It's also about how do we keep and be more contingent and create some recurring things that are happening in the future. So I love that that perspective that you're coming at it from. It also does allow for the stuff that we don't get the chance to do. And it removed that excuse. Like I have excuses that I'll use of, oh, I just don't have time. If I wasn't on the road, I would always do this thing. And uh, I haven't been on the road for like eight weeks. And some of those things still haven't happened. So clearly they weren't, uh, they weren't priorities prior. Exactly. And, you know, those excuses that you said we normally have, I'm stuck in traffic. Well, there's no traffic right now. I'm not <laughs> stuck in nothing right now. Uh, you know, I'll get to that a little bit later. No, it's getting done. All the, you know, Covey, many years ago, we talked about the important time management matrix, right? Mm -hmm. Spending time in quadrant two, spending that time doing that big picture thinking as opposed to focus so focusing solely on those urgent things. And so for me, it's been such a blessing to fill up my, my whiteboard, to have conversations that otherwise would not happen. And like we mentioned earlier, just to reimagine what life is going to look like after this. And if a leader that's listening or watching now hasn't done this, haven't had their aha moment, what would you, where do you recommend they start? Um, you know, a quote I like to say all the time is that no one who has achieved anything of significance did it alone, neither should you. Right now is a beautiful opportunity for leaders to find ways to work with other professionals, other individuals. I don't care if that's colleagues at other organizations, if they happen to work with a coach or if they happen to work with a consulting firm, to get asked some questions that maybe people aren't going to ask you internally. Ask you, uh, ask, get asked some questions that your subordinates won't ask you or your peers won't ask you um, to challenge you in a really good way that you otherwise wouldn't be challenged. You know, the opportunity we have right now is not necessarily to call people out but to find ways to call them up to what the opportunity is before them. So I invite these folks to get out of their silos, to get out of their place of comfort, to go into a space where they are going to be exposed, maybe where it may be a little bit vulnerable, but something good will come out of that. Mm, I love the idea of getting somebody outside the sphere of influence that is com more objective in their approach to ask the tough questions. And maybe they don't even realize it's a tough question. It's just a legitimate question that pops up, but feels tougher because there's some emotional connection with things that are happening. Yeah. And I think, you know, again, we get stuck in our silos. We get, we get stuck on the hedonic treadmill in our regular day to day. And this is the opportunity again, that control all delete that reset where we can shift things in a brand new way, come back better and stronger. And also what I love about this time right now is we're, we're starting to identify a lot of things. Oh, what should we start doing? How can we pivot? How can we change? How can we grow? A question I'm finding people aren't asking themselves enough is, what should we stop doing? Mm -hmm. What no longer serves me? What, what depletes me? What depletes the team? What can we stop doing? So that's a great question you can ask your team as well. What do we not need to do moving forward? Mm -hmm. And you brought it up uh, somewhat in the, I don't always need to get on an airplane to do this. And uh, we have approached it from a product profitability standpoint of saying, why how do we examine each of our products? What the, what's the value proposition? How are we delivering them? What's the margin? And, and taking the time to look through some of these things since it suddenly was pulling the plug on being able to even offer that. And then also comes from the soul somewhat. I, I did have a moment of reflection of saying that my I feel self-worth from the value that I create and the motivation and inspiration that I give to others. And being removed from those moments, I a couple times just went, well, what am I supposed to be doing with my life? <laughs> like how, how is it that I'm supposed to gain some of that as, as a human being as well? So redefining. I appreciate you being willing to share that. And if you don't mind, I'm going to preach for a second mm -hmm. uh, because I know exactly what you're talking about because I'm a guy that gets on stages, as you know, in front of 5,000 people, 3,000 people, hundreds. And I love that type of work. I'm a guy that worked in television for so long, looking at red cameras on live television. And I love that high. And this makes me think about that moment, uh, a moment, Brandy, years ago, I was speaking on a college campus and a kid came up to me and he said, hey, Antonio, I see on social media, you have that, that blue check mark that shows that you're verified. How, how do I get verified? And I said, well, before I get into the details of that, tell me, why do you want to be verified? And he said, uh, well, to, to show that I'm important. 
And it gave me pause for a second. I said, well, well, don't you know you are important, right? Without a blue check mark. And I, we have to remind ourselves in these moments that we are quote unquote verified from the day that we are born without a blue check mark. We are verified, we are of value whether we get on a stage in front of thousands or hundreds or not. This is one of those moments right now where, again, the, our, our meaning, our purpose goes beyond what happens out there, but what focuses inside of here. I think, watch this, I think one of the biggest challenges people are having right now, Brandy, is that people miss being seen. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't have homes. They, they have places they sleep. Mm -hmm. They have places they dress, get dressed in places that they eat, but they don't have homes per se. That man, that woman that bought that expensive car to be seen, they're not being seen right now. That person that bought that expensive handbag or those designer uh, sunglasses that wants to be acknowledged when they walk into Starbucks and someone says, wow, he or she's wearing so-and-so, that's not happening right now. So we have to reset to get back to we are enough on our own, regardless of what our job title is, regardless of what type of car we drive, regardless of what type of designer clothes we are wearing, we are enough. And this is a real moment for all of us. And we'll see if folks are willing to take life up on what it has to offer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also examining, I think, the ways that we can provide value in other methods and, and, and give back. And I think that's been an opportunity for me to say, well, if I can't provide for individuals this way or provide for my teams in this way, I might be able to in this way and, and being able to, to, to shift the value proposition. Yeah, people value, I'm, I'm learning right now with, with my family, a lot of people are valuing, fi figuring this out with their families as well, how much they love just our presence. I think sometimes we feel like as leaders, we always have to do something. Mm. We always have to say something. We always have to deliver something when sometimes our presence in itself is enough. Mm -hmm. Being there is enough. Saying I'm here is enough. Is there anything I can do for you is enough. We don't always have to be the superhero mm -hmm. showing up to save the day. Just being there mean so much mm -hmm. absolutely until my kids are sick of me and then they're going to be like go get on an airplane <laughs> um, listen my my kids right now are like dad what, what, why are you here what, what are you doing can you can you because why where's this discipline coming from come on man go go get on a plane right yeah exactly um so media you've mentioned the media several times in your involvement in it and media certainly has played a role in the last you know, six months in the in the world, both in people's perceptions as well as knowing what to do and how to be effective. Do you have any advice? Yeah, first and foremost, all media is not created equal. Uh, I think we have to remember that. Um, whether we're scrolling on Instagram, whether we're scrolling on Twitter, Facebook, you name it, no matter what channels you happen to watch on television, know that their job is to keep you tuning in. Uh, the job on the phone is to keep you scrolling, to keep you engaged. And what they're going to do is their darndest to keep you in fear, to keep you afraid, to keep you in anticipation. I mean, I invite you just to check your energy levels, to check your pulse, to check your anxiety before and after consuming news. The opportunity we have is to identify those key news sources that we can go to for reliable, you know, consistent information. I mean, places I like to look are the New York Times. I like looking at the Wall Street Journal. I like looking at the Associated Press. Those are places that I feel really comfortable with what's being shared. Not the editorial pages, not the opinion pages, but just the news that's being shared. And what I'm inviting leaders to do is just to consume news just a couple of times a day. A lot of folks are on it all day and they're riding a roller coaster with the emotions of the news cycle. Those newsrooms got you controlled. But believe me, over the course of 24 hours, if you check the news just twice a day, say in the morning or the evening, you're going to get everything that you need to know. And consistently scrolling is not going to help you. It's just going to increase stress. It's going to increase anxiety and it's going to shift how you show up for other people in your life. Yeah, no doubt. And and I also see leaders uh, having a struggle communicating things to their staff when the staff come in and they think they already know what they should be doing. Maybe it's just a glimpse into what doctors deal with, with people Googling their symptoms or things, right? But it's this idea that leaders, that when we, we say this is going to be safer, I'm going to try my best to make this environment safer, here's how we're going to serve, and then people think they, they have the best advice or are listening to other things online. Yeah, I think the opportunity is that's where experts come in to help, right? There are so many organizations, so many consulting firms out there that can support you in making those good decisions. You don't have to go about it alone. You don't have to make assumptions. You don't have to guess. Those resources are available to help you. Um, also, we don't have to doubt our experience, right? Everything that got us to this moment, we have a lot of data in our lifetime, a lot of experience. A lot of us have a lot of common sense and know-how of what's right 
and what's wrong. Mm -hmm. And I think if your gut is telling you something may not be right, something may be off, uh, I think you should listen to it and inquire and get a second opinion on those things. That's good advice. Can you share a funny story? Yeah, um, a funny story I share in my book is when I was uh, 19 years old, uh, a bunch of my college buddies and I decided to go get tattoos. Mm. Some peer pressure came in, and I remember going into the tattoo parlor, and the woman who was doing the tattoo said, hey, fellas, the book is over there. And she pointed to a book, and apparently, I didn't know at the time, oh, you pick whatever tattoo you're going to get <laughs> in the body for the rest of your life From in a book. book. <laughs> and so I went and opened the book, and, you know, I saw the dolphins and the tigers and the panthers and all that kind of, and the four-leaf clovers and all those things. And something in that 19-year-old moment of me knew that I didn't want something from the book on my arm. Uh, so I decided to get my name tattooed on my left deltoid. <laughs> and for the longest time, uh, I got teased my whole life. People would say, oh, is, is that just in case you forget your name? <laughs> Are you getting your social security number next? Is that your boyfriend? <laughs> is that your boyfriend's name? So many different things. To the point, Brandy, I remember going to a dermatologist on the Upper East Side of Manhattan to learn about getting it laser removed. And he pretty much told me that we can remove this pretty much where no one's going to notice except for you. And I went home, like, determined, saying, you know, I'm going to get rid of this tattoo. That is my name. Mm -hmm. But something told me that as much as that tattoo was an embarrassment for some time in my life and it stopped me from wearing tank tops as much as <laughs> I wanted to, you know, it was part of my story. It was part of my journey. And so I decided to keep that tattoo. And I, and it's, um, it's funny when my kids look at it and they're, like, confused, like, why dad has his name on his arm. <laughs> uh, however, what I realized, though, is that's part of my story and I'm going to leave it and uh, not get rid of it. Oh, I love that. And it's a good thing you didn't choose the dolphins. I feel like that might have been laser removed. Can you leave us with a bold action item or takeaway? Yeah, I think the bold item or attack takeaway that you can use for this call is be willing to get off of the sidelines. We talked about this a little bit earlier uh, in, in the episode. And a lot of people right now are sitting on the sidelines. They are living on autopilot. They're waiting for other people to make decisions for them. And as I said earlier, not making a decision is making a decision. Right now, we all have an opportunity to be bold once again. At some point in our life, we were bold. At some point, we were willing to stretch ourselves. We're willing to, as I like to say, find the edge. Someone told me a long time ago, if you're not close enough to the edge, then you are taking up too much space. Mm -hmm. And I believe that with everything. And right now in your life, somewhere you're being safe, somewhere you're being comfortable, somewhere you have stopped growing. And I invite you to identify those key things, those steps that you can take to get yourself to being bold again, to get yourself to living life on purpose. For some people, that could be hitting the gym again. For some people, that could be making a phone call. For others, that could be pressing publish on a blog post. Um, it could be a multitude of things, but the thing is this. We have to remember that we have a say in our life. At some point, we forget that this is our life and that no one can care more than we do. Look, our, our spouses care, our siblings care, our friends care, our bosses and colleagues care. But the truth of the matter is that no one can care more than us. And if someone does care about you in your life more than you do, something's wrong. So I'm challenging everyone listening right now just to identify what's one thing that they can do to stretch themselves just a little bit. Doesn't need to be crazy. Doesn't need to be major. But that one thing that's going to help them grow a little bit. And if they don't know what that thing is. It's typically that thing that will make you get butterflies. Mm -hmm. It's typically that thing that will make your heart rate increase a little bit. It's that thing that may make your fingers tremble a little bit because you're about to do something that you normally don't do. So I'm inviting everyone listening to this to be bold once again. I love it. And if people wanted to get a hold of you, how would they do that? Yeah, you can find me on the internet at theantonionevs.com. All of my social media is at theantonionevs. Uh, the podcast, The Best Thing, can be found on every uh, podcasting platform. And I'd love for you to reach out and come say hello in whatever way you would like to. I love it. Thank you so much for being a part of this today. It was great to see you. Great to hear your advice. And I hope I see you in person again soon. Hey, I can't wait to make that happen. And I'm going to come do an episode in the studio when my book comes out uh, in January 2021. Love that idea. Let's make it happen. All right. Take care. Thank you, Bye. Brandy. Bye. Good seeing you. Bye. Let's head out to our shout out. Hey guys, uh, my name is Thibaut and uh, you are listening to Brandy on the Hot Box. I'm an artist and uh, I am doing a workshop uh, with Brandy and Sweet Arthur today. Like, we did amazing pieces. 
So Wendy, you already had, you already have a good time. I hope you guys keep going. Thank you to Antonio and thank you to our shout out from our friends in Paris and the the graffiti workshop. It was such a cool moment there in Paris. I want to share with you a couple of takeaways. Antonio said some really amazing uh, options and advice for us to really start executing now. And I'd like to share with you this bold takeaway here for you. It is our kick ass from today. As you refine your skills here in the new normal, one, make a list of things. Make a list of everything you have to do. Make it tangible. Write it down on paper and put it into action. Execute. Number two, redefine your value proposition. I said it a few times in the episode, talking about how we can find our new value, how we can redefine and reforecast for the future. And three, per perfect that virtual side of us, whether that's in Zoom calls, whether that's communicating with our staff, or whether that's sifting through the media that's out there we want to perfect that virtual piece because it is here to stay there is your top three kick ass thank you again to antonio neves it was great to have you here on the show if you want his contact information we'll put it out on the website strategichopbox.com or hit us up on any social media at strategichopbox or at brandy love get out there and kick some ass